A table saw insert is a removable fixture that supports the wood while it is being cut. The large slot on the standard insert allows you to cut with the blade vertical or at an angle. This can be quite useful, but the timber is not supported very well where the blade enters the wood and can lead to poor quality cuts. One way to improve the cut quality is to make custom table saw inserts. I'm going to create a basic table saw insert by using FreeCAD to reverse engineer the one that came with my table saw. This is a fairly simple part to reverse engineer and I will show you the steps I used to create a part that is centered around the origin of the model. The goal of this video is to teach you how to reverse engineer a part from a photograph, not make the part itself. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a video showing how to make the actual table saw insert. Let's get started. The first thing I am going to do is create a new model. I'm going to create a parametric part, so I'll click on the parametric part tool to create the model. I have taken a photo of the table saw insert that I want to reverse engineer, so I will import that next. The quality of the image is very important. I am not talking about image focus or clarity, although that is important as well. The quality that I am talking about is how accurately the photo represents the part you're reverse engineering. I'm going to be using an image that is a pretty good representation of the part, and then I will show you how you can calibrate the image to more accurately represent the part. Start the import tool by selecting import from the file menu. Alternatively, you could press the control and I keys simultaneously to start the tool. Select the file to import and then import it. I like to have FreeCAD assign random colors to each part I create, but I didn't realize that it might also affect the color of the imported images. Sometimes this results in an image whose color has changed. This can be easily corrected. Click on the image in the model view. Click on the view pane in the property view. The shape appearance entry may be overriding the image color and changing it to white will restore the right color. Click on the colored square so you can change it. A colored rectangle will be displayed to the right of the color square showing the current color. Click on the colored rectangle to open the color picker. Select the white color square and click OK. Importing the image is the first step of the process but I can't start reverse engineering the part because the image is not scaled correctly. Aligning and scaling the image properly will give you the best starting point for reverse engineering the part and in my experience this is time well spent. In this example I have a part that can be easily modeled using a slot in the sketcher so I'm going to take advantage of that fact. I want to make sure that the bottom edge of the insert in the photo is horizontal or close to it. I'm going to create a sketch that I will use to recreate the basic shape of the insert. But instead of drawing a slot, I am going to draw a horizontal guideline that I can reference during the transformation of the photo if required. You don't need to do this step, but I find that it helps in cases where the photo is not horizontal. Before I create the horizontal guideline, I'm going to switch to the top view and then create the sketch on the XY plane. I'm going to create the line on the horizontal origin of the sketch, but you can put it wherever you like. Now I'm going to rotate the image to bring it into alignment with the horizontal guideline in the sketch. There are several ways you can do this. You could use the transform tool to rotate the image in space. You could change the placement angle of the image. You could use the change image function of the image itself, or you could use a combination of methods. In my case, the image needs to be rotated a little over 90 degrees, and I will do that using the change image function. I will also use the X distance setting to move the image down towards the horizontal guideline. Right click on the image in the model view, then select the change image function. Click on the rotation field and type in the new rotation angle. In this case, it's minus 90 degrees. The image is still fractionally misaligned so I change the rotation angle until I am happy with the rotation of the image. I'm trying to align the bottom of the table saw insert with the sketch. Now that the image has been rotated, it needs to be scaled so that it can be used. The size of the part in the image may not be close to the actual size, so it needs to be scaled up or down to be as close as possible. This is where the accuracy of the image comes into play. Any minor differences can be ignored at this time. I will demonstrate some methods for dealing with lesser quality images later in the video, so make sure you watch to the end. 
Let's get on with scaling the image. The image needs to contain some form of reference to allow you to scale it correctly. In this case, there are three references. There is the part itself. There is a hand-drawn box representing the exterior dimensions of the part. And there is the ruler at the top. I choose to use the simplest option, which is the ruler. I will scale the image by right-clicking on the image in the model view, then selecting the Change Image option. The image settings are shown in the task pane and you can change them to suit your needs. I only want to change the scaling of the image, so I will use the Calibrate tool to do this. I am going to leave all the parameters at their default settings and use the ruler to set the scale. To scale the image, you select two points and specify the distance between them. I am going to use the 100mm and 200mm marks on the ruler to set the scale. So I click on the 100mm mark, then doing my best to keep the line horizontal, I click on the 200mm mark. FreeCAD displays what it thinks is the distance between the two points on the line, so I need to override it by entering 100mm. Click the OK button in the task pane to scale the image. It's now time to draw the basic part. I'm going to reuse the alignment sketch. Double click on the sketch to open it, then delete the horizontal guideline. The part can be represented using a slot, so click on the slot tool to create one. Then draw two horizontal slots over the top of the image. At this point, I would constrain the size and locations of the two slots. And if I had completed the entire reverse engineering process, I would center the base of the sketch on the origin of the model because I consider that to be good practice. But I'm not going to do that at the moment because there is a problem with the scaled image that we will look at shortly. But for the moment, let's assume that everything is okay and move on. I will close the sketch and pad it out to form a very simple table saw insert. From there, it should just be a matter of exporting the STL for 3D printing or cutting out on a CNC. Well, not quite. Now I will have a look at why I didn't constrain the sketch. The reason that I didn't constrain the sketch is because the image is not scaled correctly. I will remove the pad and go back to editing the sketch so you can see what I mean. Under the insert is a hand-drawn box with the length of the insert written on it. It should also include the height, but I accidentally cut that off when I took the photo. The height is 95mm. I will draw a rectangle that is 407mm by 95mm and temporarily convert the slots to be construction geometry to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Notice how the rectangle and the sketched insert don't quite line up. This is due to the way the photo was taken. I took the photo on my phone and I don't know whether I had it tilted, but I don't think it was entirely horizontal. This seems to have thrown out the measurements. It may also have something to do with the image being rotated. Regardless of how it happened, I need to correct this before I can complete the model. The change image tool is the one I will use to make the correction but I will need to close the sketch before I can use it. I didn't go through the change image tool earlier in detail, so let's have a look at its features. You can change the plane that the image is on, its location on that plane, its rotation, transparency, the size of the image, and you can calibrate the image. I have used the rotation and X distance settings to rotate and move the image. And I've also used the calibration tool to scale the image, but I have not used the fine grain settings. Above the calibrate button are settings for the width and height of the image, and a toggle for keeping the aspect ratio the same. The calibrate button allows you to set the size of the image by selecting two points and specifying the distance. It then calculates the width and height of the image accordingly while keeping the aspect ratio the same. I will manually change the width or height of the image to change the scaling. I have turned off the toggle keeping the aspect ratio the same so that I can change the height and width independently. I'm pretty happy with the height of the image, so I only need to change the width to bring the table saw insert to the right length. The width setting relates to the width of the imported image, and the height setting relates to its height. As you will recall, I rotated the image so that it was aligned the way that I wanted it. So that means that in this case, the width setting actually refers to the distance in the screen's y-axis, and the height refers to the screen's x-axis. In other words, 
they are back to front, or as we like to say down here, ass about. So I have to reduce the height of the image in order to shorten the length of the insert. I will click on the height setting and slowly scroll the mouse wheel until the length of the insert decreases to the same length as the box in the sketch. The image has also moved slightly to the right and this can be corrected by changing the X or the Y distance. Again, in this case, they are asked about, so I will change the Y distance to move it back to the left. You might need to make changes in both places to get the result that you want. I will click the OK button when I am happy with the size of the image. I turned off the Keep Aspect Ratio toggle while making changes to the height of the image because if it were left on, the width setting would be automatically changed to keep the height width ratio the same. This would have caused the size of the insert to be smaller than 407 by 95 millimeters and would have defeated the purpose of the changes I was making. I can now constrain the slots. I will reopen the sketch and convert the slots to geometry and the box back to construction geometry. Now I can add hard constraints to set the size and locations of the slots. For completeness, I will make the table saw insert symmetric around the origin of the sketch and then move the image into the same position. I will center the insert by selecting the endpoints of the outer arcs and making them symmetric with the origin. Then I will close the sketch and use the change image tool to move the image by modifying the X and Y distances. Again, I will use the mouse scroll wheel to make the changes. I can now hide the image and pad the sketch to get the basic table saw insert. My goal for this video was to show you how to reverse engineer an existing part in FreeCAD. I plan to use this model as the basis for creating a physical template that allows me to make inserts for my table saw. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to create a video showing how this is done. Reverse engineering a part from a photo is a fairly straightforward process but it is critical that you scale the image correctly. I took the photo with the part sitting on my workbench at waist height, but you may have better results by placing it on the floor and standing over it to take the photo. Either way, you have learned a technique for correcting the scale of the image if it didn't scale correctly in the first instance. I found that drawing a bounding box around the part on the paper it was photographed on to be very helpful in diagnosing the scaling problem that I encountered. The part I was reproducing was pretty simple. And I think that having the bounding box for a more complex part would be extremely useful, but your mileage may vary. Let me know what you think or your experience in the comments. If you have found this video useful, please consider subscribing or buying me a coffee. You can use the playlists on the right to learn more about FreeCAD workbenches. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.